So it's only really when behaviours intensify, like I've described there, um, that's when the parent will automatically come in and, um, you know, want it all to stop and, and will give in. So this is something that can be a challenge to um, taper off um, and not react to. However, um, it often takes a lot of perseverance and consistency from our part um, to help our children understand that, of course, they can't get what they want, but you're trying to help them in such a way that, um, uh, you know, of learning that not all behaviours are going to get us engaged as, as much as our toddlers would like, like that to be the case. Um, but I would have mentioned earlier on that I was going to focus particularly on the likes of hitting out and biting. And these are the physical behaviours that I think parents find and can struggle with because they are physical. Whereas with the shouting, the screaming, maybe when there is, um, uh, when our children are reluctant to listen um, and maybe do what we've asked them to do, when it comes to biting and hitting, um, it's a lot more apparent, particularly because there's the biter and the hitter, and then there is the child that's been bitten and been hit. And that's where it's really important that we to, to draw the line. But from our children's perspective, um, particularly for toddlers who hit and bite, they're exploring, they are um, testing, testing the limits and boundaries. They don't understand the, um, that that element of you know that spatial awareness and they can be triggered quite easily and a lot happens in their day they're not in control of they don't intend to happen and they can't resolve themselves and um, so it's it's it can be quite hard for uh, let's particularly preschoolers and, st and toddlers but there are many reasons it could be invasion of personal space it could be that any every time they hit and they bite it gets a reaction from the adult and therefore it is that the attention that they are looking for so if your child is a biter for example the next time it happens again look at the trigger are they tired are they hungry have they been provoked in some way um are they seeing that they know like let's say for example it is a child who um is a little envious of its sibling of their sibling so therefore they will attack in such a way again it'll get parent engaged and um, they get it as a means of, of looking for attention and if that is the case what as the parent what we need to do is um go to the child who's been bitten um offer the comfort turn around quite quickly and um, say to the child who has bitten, no biting, biting hurts. No biting in this house. And it's really important that you are firm, but calm. And, and, and to a point when we are that bit level-headed on it, if we counter-attack and we go crazy and we really, you know, we get very upset and we are shouting back at the child and, and um, you know, giving them the reasons why they can't bite and we get into the who, why, what, where, when, how of everything. That's where your response will um, be of, of, won't be as productive as you'd like it to be. Um, and what you want to try and do or attempt to do is let the child know through your tone and your body language and only a few words, keeping it very short and brief, that it isn't okay and that you are turning your attention to the child who has been bitten and you offer that comfort. Um, and that is for a child that is looking for that attention through biting. And then what's important is that you look at ways of how you can teach your child to be gentle and notice when they are being gentle to either the child that they tend to make a beeline for, whether it is a sibling or even a parent, but the less attention we pay the better and the more the child would learn that you know what this isn't getting what I want while at the same time um, demonstrating that gentle so hand over hand so taking your child's hand putting it on the other person's arm or whatever it is and just stroking it saying gently please gently please and that's where our children will learn while we are very very clear around the boundaries of what's expected of them 
at the same time they're understanding that um, what you want them to do it's the same for hitting out have a zero tolerance for hitting or kicking again they're physical behaviors that can upset another person um, and again it's looking at why they've hit out have they been provoked are they hungry are they tired are they finding that for the child that this is how they get our attention and um, be very clear in the boundary or expectation no hitting is allowed in this house be very firm in your tone be calm get down to your child's level and at that point then you let your you be very clear with your child and for children under three years of age they um are a lot more responsive to our tone and our body language than our words the more we get into it the more um you know they they kind of um withdraw after like that first sentence so tone body language being very clear in your direction your expectation and then turn your attention to the person who has been hurt and um, and be consistent and follow through because um it is a lot more our children are a lot more responsive in that manner or approach than than any other way so um, again, while it's important to look at how we manage the behaviour, it's just as important to look and tune into what has triggered it, what, what's behind it. Um, and there mightn't be a reason necessarily, but at the same time, it gives us some sense of um, where, uh, where, at what times of the day maybe our children are more vulnerable uh, to these kind of uh, behaviours.